to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. Dorian, James. Oh, was that your Dorian impression? Yeah. Oh, okay. There is not a lot of people out there who do a Dorian impression. Right, a hurricane might be the first one. Yeah. Well, a Dorian specifically. Mm. Um, because I've it's... just I've been studying wind patterns mm. and uh, uh, meteorologists' movements with their arms, and uh-huh. I feel like that's probably the exact sound of what Hurricane Dorian specifically is making right now right now i'm one of those people that feels the storm coming in my knees ah and i'm not feeling this one yeah you got a real uh it's a joint it's a joint thing and it's never failed me no um so (laughs) what what happened when there was a hurricane did you fall down a flight of stairs did your knees give out no it's just like a creakiness ah um, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a pressure. It's like an air pressure. It's a feeling mm-hmm. that you get that the storm is real and it is upon you. Yeah, it's consuming. And I'm not consuming. getting that from this one. No creakiness, huh? No creakiness in the knees. No like panicky what's going on feeling. Uh-huh. Um, I did get that with Florence. Ah. And we left. You did um, I did have a two week old, so it was kind of like even if it was a lot of rain and power loss, yeah, it wasn't gonna work for me. Can't do that. So either way, I had to go because of the age of my child. child. You do have a Jenny, though, you know. A what? A Jenny. We get a Jenny out in the gr- in the in the garage in the garage. Right. Where would you keep that once you turned it on? The Jenny. Mm-hmm. Definitely indoors because you want to inhale all of those yep. fumes. Yeah. And I'm just I'm giving tips. Slamo. Hurricane so that's tips. Why is everyone. the only person that I had to do kind of stuff like that generator mm. and things was you. Yep. And I said I'm gonna go to a luxury cabin because anything you know like that sandbags in front of stuff. I don't know. Right. 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 No, that all um, makes sense. Actually, you were leaving. I think you were going to. Texas. Yeah, you know, here's the so here's the craziest thing about what's going on right now, right? Because it was the exact Wait, situation. Hang on, this is the craziest thing ever, because um, this was brought up to me uh, two nights ago at a we were at a barbecue uh, at a friend's house, and I was like, they were like, man, uh, do you remember last time it was? Uh, I think I was watching the Cowboys Giants game, and I'm like, oh my god, I was at that game in Dallas. I am going right left your family yeah. to that game mm-hmm. in Dallas. Mm-hmm. The no, the exact game. It's Cowboys Giants. I know in the same stadium. So maybe I should never go to the Cowboys Giants game to cover that. I don't know why anyone would want to go to that game, but uh, it's a rivalry. Yeah. Now listen. Opening week of the season. Again, you're leaving your family again during a storm. Not true. So we're we're actually going to be there for the cruise. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going on the Drinking Bros cruise. Uh, it leaves out of Galveston, Texas. Therefore, uh, we got some interviews to do. We have some catching up to do for the next week. Uh, so people do not miss our little show. Little show. Little show. And then you'll you'll actually be there the day after. Um, you're flying into Houston. Right. I forget which day, but yeah, I'll yeah. be there. Be there one of the days. Correct. To get onto the cruise. <laughs> Yes. Giving myself a couple days cushion because you cannot miss that ship. No, you can't. You miss the ship, you're done. You're you out. Can't. You're gone. Because uh, the other care. option was to fly you out on September 11th, which let's not. We're not booking flights. On we're 9/11. not booking flights. And then again, with the state of, of air travel these days, Oof. you have to give yourself one to two days cushion of whatever you absolutely have to do. It's crazy. If it's not a vacation. Right? It's crazy. It's crazy. So I'm looking at look. I'm looking at the weather pattern right now because right now we're recording this on Labor Day. Yes, we work on Labor Day because we're better than you. We labor. We labor on our day. We don't uh, non labor. We honor the people who labor by we, laboring. By laboring. Yeah. Yep. So we keep laboring, and then sure. uh, I'll probably go in tonight um, and deliver 
a child, a child while a woman is really, in labor. Yep, full yep. circle. Full labor. I go labor all day long. Right. Uh, I'm looking at the charts right now. So, man, I don't. Because, look, everybody, the same thing, you know, last time. Get gas, get bread, get fucking canned goods. Make sure you, you have anything for the storm. Bread, water, batteries. Yeah, so I'm looking at it now. Thursday, 50 mile an hour winds, right? Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's, that's just a walk in the park at mm -hmm. this point. Like, we've been through 50s before, you know? Right. Like, that's fine. We went to Buffalo wild wings one night during 50 mile an hour winds. oh remember? yeah no problem yeah watched the game enjoyed no our problem. lives um yeah the day before 12 mile an hour winds, and then 50 it says on thursday so that could be a problem for uh if you're leaving on a thursday yeah uh, i don't know what the rules are on that um friday yeah, friday what do we got 21 mile an hour winds. that's a normal it's a normal day yeah it'll, you'll get there faster maybe hope so <laughs> it'll kind of i hope so it's a it's a five a.m. flight for the big guy, and uh, oof, God, that is the second time this has happened. An old five a.m.er, five a.m.er that could possibly be canceled, and you won't Again. know. Could you until... imagine? Could you imagine? What would you have to do? I think Raleigh would be the answer. Then <sighs> we did the Jacksonville thing last time. Who knows, man? You want to go Richie Valens style during the? Yeah, man. If I'm going to do it, let's flip a coin and then Richie! get on the let's get yeah. on the plane and do it. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of which, uh, there's I'm going to I'm going to tie that comment back around at the end of this. I read a crazy article this morning um, when I was doing because we, we do do research for the show. Yeah. Right. I read a crazy article about I don't, but yeah, rock stars and mm -hmm. deaths that I was just like, oh my god, I'm going to share it with you after this. But I want to let the audience know that we did indeed go to the Olive Garden. Oh, yes. Yeah, because there was... I don't play. No, and and I posted pictures online uh, and, video. and videos. <laughs> That's right, the video too. Um, I think it's the song, again, the song, which we played on the last show. Last show? Yeah. Pa -pa yeah. Boop, 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 boop. It's just... Bam, 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 bam. Yeah, I'm at ST James, ST James on Instagram, if you want to look that up. You were at Jesse Wiseman. Did you... Post it? I haven't. Oh. Mm, ba -ba I wanted to just I wanted a staggered. Um but a it was staggered post. It was uh awesome and hilarious and went with uh some neighbors. My my parents were actually here. Uh we went with them and we had a enjoyable evening at the Olive Garden. Uh Jables did rent out the family room, which I did not think was a real thing. One. <laughs> Two, I assumed it would be private, like a closed door. It was nuts. It, it was definitely open to everyone there. It was almost there. like a stage. And so yeah. the people that were sitting right outside this big opening with their two children, which they were annoying, so it was fine. The kids were screaming at the top of their lungs. But they kept looking over at us like, oh, God. Well, you got the shitty table because you didn't make a reservation. I saw you up at the front. Yep. You didn't, make a reservation. <laughs> you didn't make a reservation. Sorry. So you had to sit literally... In the eye of our storm. Yeah. And that's and just dirty looks looking over at us. Well, I mean, when when you have friends that just say fuck every other word, like I get it. Uh, and I don't fine. think it was anyone but you that was saying it. But no. that's totally fine. No, so, D'Anthony was there. Oh, uh, yeah. D'Anthony was there. Um, and then we had some friends of ours who came. Uh, this is the beauty of, of, of this whole jaunt down to Olive Garden. We had some friends come that got out of an Uber. So they took an Uber to Olive Garden. They all did. Expecting to get trashed, which yeah. is great. Three of them walked in with Dixie cups. Oh, yeah. Filled with liquor. And kept them up on the table. the table and kept them on the table the entire meal. Yes. Because I think they thought, oh, well, I'm just going to a friend's house. Yeah. Because it's Olive Garden. Because when you're there, you you're are, in fact, family. Family. Yeah. Um, and now that food was so terrible no it wasn't that bad here's the thing olive garden salad best in the biz the salad and breadsticks did not disappoint best in the biz breadsticks did not disappoint best in the biz now the rest of it uh i had a hard time with the lasagna is actually pretty good there and so is the manicotti if you get it uh-huh we How, did not however yeah we did not we were going somewhere after and you really don't want to bowl 
yes. of pasta. You printed out the book cover, gigantic size yes. at Kinko's, which was yes. nice. Very nice of you. We can reuse that. I got a couple of those. Yeah. I put the New York Times, Times bestseller. Stamp on there. Sticker on there. Put it yeah. on an easel in the corner, you guys. It was nice. It was really nice. And uh, it, we had a, a like a great weekend after that because we, we had a, a couple barbecues in the neighborhood and like word had spread at that point that the book was out and number one in the world and all mm -hmm. that stuff. And um, and that was fun. And then even even funner, like which was a really fucking cool moment was we uh, we usually Sunday mornings, you know, you and I kids run around. Yeah. Have some coffee, throw on like, you know, CBS News. Um, and Whatever's on like ge we, are, we geest. usually watch. We uh, usually watch. Uh, yeah. Willie Geist, one of the Willie best geist. in the biz, by the way, interview yeah. wise and host wise. He's but great. Uh, we call him the geese infection. Geese infection. I love him. And we, we usually put that on. And total shock was on CBS, you know, during the news. It cuts to, hey, here's your summer beach reads, New mm -hmm. York Times bestseller list, and then seeing your name right there on, on the show that you watch. And it was only the first five that they put up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So had you been any lower, <laughs> it wouldn't have, wouldn't have made it. showed it, but wouldn't it was like, it. yeah, you are. You know, and I, and I think there, that was probably, and when I thought about it, I was like, that was probably their thinking. Those dicks that were like, we can't do number <laughs> one, right? But we'll do the lowest they could go. Yeah. With still getting you on like some some stuff is five. So if you go any lower than five, they don't put you anywhere. I think we had this conversation on Drinking Bros podcast, but I don't know if we had it on ours. Uh, New York Times bestseller list was the first one that came in, and it's it's like the top fifteen, right? By mm -hmm. category, uh, our category was uh, nonfiction hardback, obviously because uh, it's a biography. Um, that was the first list that came out, and we were like, it, it, and it was number five, and I was mm -hmm. just like. Man, I thought we were, I thought we would have been two. I thought, I thought maybe two or, or three, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then the rest of the list came out. Number one on a Wall Street Journal bestseller list. Uh, USA Today, number one. Uh, Publishers Weekly, number one. There was like three other lists. We were all number one on it. I was like, and then the, the numbers dropped, right? We, had, we got the actual mm -hmm. numbers that were printed to the public. And it was like, they had Michelle Obama at number two. She'd sold 8,200 copies. We tripled her uh, we sold 27,000 I believe and we were number one in the world and then slowly as the weekend went on every list just kept coming out number one number one number one number one and it was just like all right it, it was great right um my question is looking at the numbers from this last week the book held pretty steady so it should be on all the lists again for this upcoming week if you were the New York Times since you got outed like that mm -hmm. across the board of what the book sales were did we out them in the right avenues? I don't know. Okay. Um, you know, I, I like I'll usually go to Twitter for something um, because people get back right away, and and when they see that blue check mark, they're like, oh fuck, we don't want this guy to start going ham, you know, mm -hmm. like I did on that American flight, and uh, which was hilarious. But um, uh, with them, they don't. The New York Times doesn't answer anything, so mm. I don't really know. Um, but. It, they could do a make good this week and be like, hey, man, we're going to we're going to put this up at onesies. But you're going to see the book uh, everywhere um, starting this week where it's like Costco, Walmart, mm -hmm. airports, all that other stuff. Um, and it's going to get crazy and you're going to be like, holy shit. Uh, and that's been the funnest thing is like where people are finding it, sending it to me and and everything where they're just like, dude, I, I feel like with this show. And, um, and and drinking bros with all the listeners, like not only did you guys come out and support it and buy it, um, but y you were rooting for it as much as we were. And that was a fun thing. So like th the joy and happiness of all of these lists coming out, um, not only from our listeners, but from ourself, like we enjoyed it just as much as you did. So all the pictures everybody sent in and everything was, was awesome. I mean, it was just, uh, it was a really, really fun weekend and, uh, once in a lifetime experience maybe twice who knows hey who knows yeah um but it is a joint it's cool because it feels like a joint effort yes um as far as like you can write a book mm -hmm. and it can be awesome but it does nothing and goes nowhere unless a group of people embrace it yeah and and push it forward and so it really is like one does not happen without the other no 
and uh and that's just the truth it's like it's like doing a play it's like you could do it i guess but unless people are in the seats that's why it's like that shared experience and you're both in it yeah and i and i had this conversation with matt uh probably i think it was maybe two weeks before the book came out we did we, we it was just him and i on drinking bros we did it late on a friday or whatever we we're drunk having some shit and he was like it was weird he asked me a question he said uh what are you most nervous about this coming out and i said failure you put so much hard work into a project like this right for three mm-hmm. years let's say it just came out and failed and then people you just move on with your life and you're like fuck because that happened before in the past 50k and a call girl where it's a great film and i worked for three years on that like that editing was really really difficult and we had some great screenings and all of that stuff but it was right we didn't get into sundance which i thought we should have and then you know we missed uh, the key festivals that would have really blown mm-hmm. it up and we just I, I feel like we just missed on that but then therefore it became a failure um and it just didn't do that well financially dvds had died at that point and um that was my biggest fear personally so when the list came out it, it felt like a weight off my shoulders of like awesome i i just i spent three years on this fucking thing for the right reason that i was hoping for you know um because man that last one was a real kick in the ding dong like three years of of your life for anyone to put into something is is tough uh not just books or movies but you know businesses Mm -hmm. um people starting businesses and companies and we've had some sponsors uh, that have come and gone on on both of these shows who have started small businesses and they failed yeah. Um, I've had many conversations with, with the business owners of why and, and what, you know, what happened and, and everything else. And, uh, I, I don't want to relegate it to just because it's what I do of, of books and films. It's anything like it is a kind of a, a tiny business, whatever you're working on. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, my best friend is going through it now. Um, Clayne Crawford, obviously. And, uh, he financed, um, his new movie, um, the director needed, I, I think, half of it. And, and I think the director had the other half. But it's a director he believed in. He's not super famous, but he's, he's, I think his last two movies have been in Sundance. And, you know, he's in the edit. He's going through making the artwork and all that mm-hmm. stuff. And, uh, you know, we, he called me and was just like, man, I, how is this, you know? And right. I was like, you never know how they're going to do. You never know how anything of these things are going to do. Um, um, from what I've seen, like pictures and the poster and stuff like great. this, like I am intrigued. It looks awesome. Yeah. And I know that Clayne is so good. He's good. And the girl in it, uh, I believe is was she was in rectify as well. And she was really good, um, and rectify. So I, I think they'll, I think it'll be rad. Uh, it's called the killing of, uh, two lovers. So. Uh, we'll we'll have him on the show to chat about it when it comes out. Yeah, I know, I know they're gearing it up to get ready for the Sundance submission, which is it usually ends in like two weeks or something like that. So they're they're getting close. Yeah, um, the poster is done and all that stuff. And uh, but same thing, you know, he called me about the same trepidation of like, hey man, what happens if this just? And I was like, that's a possibility, and that's what sucks mm-hmm. about all of mm-hmm. you know work in life, uh, no matter what it is across the board. But you guys showed out. Um, it was number one, I, you know, whatever happens after this point with it is gravy. Um, I mean, it's been an amazing, amazing run and, uh, the way that it was received in the reviews and everything is like through the roof. So uh, I'm super stoked, uh, super stoked, but, uh, we got some sponsors, Jabes. Let's do it. Put this whole shit wagon on the air. On air, air, air. First up, talking about ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Come on. It came out. Put yourself on a nice little mattress. Um, it's floatable too. So if the hurricane does come, you can float away in it. That is actually not true. I'm just getting word from our <laughs> producer, Jamie. That is definitely not oh, true. Oh, you cannot float on it. Nope. Got that it. Is, got uh, it. Got that it. is going to sink immediately. Matt, oh, he's, sa- he's saying right now that it's actually going to it's gonna soak up more water. So don't do that. <laughs> um, but if you're looking for comfort, pure, honest, raw comfort, emotional support and comfort. Yeah. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drink it, bros. You won't get it from me. Nope. Get yourself a mattress. (laughs) 
Uh, you're not going to get it from your wife out there. You're probably <laughs> going to get it from that bed. They've got pillows, adjustable More bases. More support than your wife. God you. damn right. Uh, Every sheets. Time. Yeah. If you're 15, no. You're, yeah, if you're 15, you can sleep in one. <laughs> uh, if you're a military or first responder, you get 15% off, though. Uh, just scroll down to the bottom of the page and click it, and then boom, at checkout. That's a fucking hearty savings. Uh, go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today <laughs> or every day. So is it the deals are for 15 year olds or? Uh, yeah, you can get it for a 15 year old. Oh, get a mattress for the 15 percent off. 15 percent off for military. And oh, first okay, responders. military first yes. responders. Yes. Um, as always, 36 months, pay as you go program, no interest. <laughs> no one's doing that with ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Next up, we've got strikeforceenergy.com. Shabloinkers. Yeah. Where are you at, James? Where are you at today? If you're 15. Yeah. If you're 15 years old. <laughs> uh, the claws. The claws are upon us. This is, I feel like we're in the dawn of the claws, by the way. Are you drinking White Claw now? I will get to that in a second, James. Um, okay. People are using the strike force and putting it in white claws. We are getting those photos over and over and over again. Oh, we were at two parties over the weekend, two barbecues, two birthdays. And here was the weird thing. I'm starting to see more and more dudes go to the claw. No carbs, no sugars. Same with strike force energy. Mm -hmm. No carbs, no sugars. Mm -hmm. And... It, the, it's higher, like it's 6%. It's 6% per can. Mm -hmm. So you're getting more fucked up off of that than if you were like a Bud or a Bud Light. I mean, it's, it's higher content than that. Mm -hmm. The danger zone out there is Four loco. That's the unknown. That's the Cat 5 that's waiting to go. But right. uh, uh, with the White Claws, here's why everybody's putting Strike Force in them. There isn't that much, it's like a hint of flavor. It's kind of like a LaCroix. Which I like, because you don't want it to be super sweet. Uh, I, I would prefer a little more flavor. Yes, but that's why they work perfect. because it's not like you're putting sweet and sweet. It's like right. a tiny bit. Um, so look, a strike force is exactly where you need to be on that. Um, you go to strikeforceenergy.com, 10 pack, 40 pack, 750 milliliter bottle. It's just a tasty, tiny little tin pouch. You squeeze open and pour it into the white claw and then drink it down. And enjoy your life. Enjoy your life all it, day and night. If you're having a hurricane party, these are great. Uh, Strikeforceenergy.com is always using the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. That's good every time. They have a subscription of the month, and they ship everywhere in the entire world. Ship it, ship it, ship it. Bingo, ship it, bango, ship dodge, it, Durango. Ship it, ship it, ship Last ship but not least, this is what you came for. StraightRazors.com, James. Mm. Ooh, that's a clean cut, smooth. Oh, you right? It? There it is. Ah, ah. There it is. I want to get caught inside of me. What does that look for? Did you hurt yourself on that one? No. If you're if you're watching the video show on YouTube, by the way, subscribe on YouTube. Um, you can see James's weird faces in between <laughs> me talking. <laughs> Uh, and wherever she goes to inside her tiny little mind. Because <laughs> sometimes I'll look over and you were definitely not not here. Uh, StraightRazors.com has got everything you need to be a real man in this life. I'm mirroring what the audience is thinking sometimes. Sure. You bet. When you say things. Uh, okay. Okay. So I got you. Yeah. Yep. Uh, use a straight razor out there. If you're ready to shave your pregnant wife's bush. Oh. No. Yep. Um, I just saw a, uh, I was in, uh, actually I walked into a woman's room the other day and there was a changing table and there was a sign up there that just said, for all pregnant women, please, please clean, clean off your pubes off the ground if you're, you're using a straight razor to, to shave your bush. So. Did I tell you Apparently about. it's become a thing. <laughs> Before you do that, let's go to straightrazors.com, promo code revolution, 20% off. Now, Jabe's go. So there's a sign, I think I've told this story, but at the gold gym that I went to in los angeles mm -hmm. the downtown one that's like underground Have oh yeah, been yeah, to it? yeah yeah um there's a sign on there's signs by all the hair dryers that said not do not use on your crotch oh hair. yes correct because you would go and i'm like why do they have that sign that is like so who who doesn't know not to do that and there they are all the 
old Asian ladies that just come there to use the pool and the sauna. Mm-hmm. Just spread eagle. Yeah, using the dryer on, on their up bush. Up on it, yep. Yeah. Just drying their bush off. Yeah. I get it, ma'am. Do uh, you? Yeah. I was very traumatized. You don't want to leave with a wet bush. Sure. And a towel just is not going to. No, it's not going to okay. do anything. Uh, it's it's not going to do anything at all for you. So, um, you know. Again, blatant disregard. Didn't look at the signs. Really just do whatever the fuck they want. We're trying to end no wet, rules wet bushes apply to across them. America, though. Um, you should always go out with a dry bush. Asians. And get you can get it wet later in the night, but uh, start off Asians. with a dry bush. Yep. yep. Get a wide on yep. later. Um, that's your that's your terminology, James. Mm-hmm. Um, I was talking about the rock stars earlier. Yep. And I want to. Th- this article I read was so wild that I was like, man, I. It's hard to. It's hard to wrap your mind around. Uh, They were saying, get ready for the next wave of dead rock stars that is coming on the horizon. And I was like, huh? Like, what what the fuck? And they were like, it's going to devastate an entire generation and people because, you know, the music isn't that great today. Mm -hmm. Like with especially rock, it's it's virtually dead at this point. Um, uh, Listen to this list. I, I was really surprised. And then. I was really surprised at the ages and I was really surprised at how great everyone was during a certain period of time and then how it just went away. Mm. You ready? Mm-hmm. So uh, in this this article just said, I'm, I mean, this is a bold move, Cotton, but they said, behold the killing fields that lie before us. Bob Dylan, 78. Yep. Paul McCartney, 77. Right. Paul Simon, 77. Oy. Art Garfunkel, 77. Carol King, 77. Brian Wilson, 77. Oh, dang, yeah. Mick yeah. Jagger, 76. Keith Richards, 75. Joni Mitchell, 75. Jimmy Page, 75. Robert Plant, 71. Uh, Roger Daltrey, 75. From The Who, obviously. Yeah. Pete Townsend, 74. Uh, Roger Waters, 75. You know, now we're getting into Pink Floyd, right? Mm-hmm. So we just, the last two were, you know, obviously Zeppelin, two Stones, two Zeppelin, uh, Roger Waters, 75, David Gilmore, 73, uh, Rod Stewart, 74, Eric Clapton, 74, Deborah mm-hmm. Harry, 74, Neil Young, 73, Van Morrison, 73, Elton John, 72, Don Henley, 72. James Taylor, 71, Jackson Brown, 70, Billy Joel, 70, and Bruce Springsteen is about to turn 70 uh, next month. When Van Morrison dies, it's going to be in my family and household. That will be your, mm. that was my next question. Who is your, your dude on this list? Like, I, it was that is Tom a Petty, lengthy right? list, isn't it? it? It is, but it also is like, is it surprising to you? I guess when you compile them all together, sure, it's very jarring. But to me, I, you know, there's a couple in there that I go, oh, are they? Still alive. Yeah. Well, look. Roger Waters was one of them. But anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Roger Waters and David Gilmore. Like like he died. Somebody told me a David Gilmore story that they were just like a huge Pink Floyd fan. And that he is so fucking mentally gone that he just fly fishes all day. And they were like, man, if you go over to this whatever city he lives in in England or whatever thing it is, they were like. You can just see him out there all day long, but he's fucking checked out, like, mentally. Um, I mean, we know who yours will be on this. uh, Obviously, it's Keith and and Mick. Like, when those two go, either one of them go, I'm going to fucking lose my shit. Um, I mean, on the outside. Like, it's going to come outside my body. Um, The shit? Yes. But he was what was really surprising about this gigantic list was, like, they're all great. All of these rock stars are great. If I'm looking around at today's landscape of who could die or would die or whatever, it was like, and the people that have with like fucking a triple X extension guy that Mm. people are still holding on to, like Mm -hmm. who's just shit. Mm -hmm. Music was shit. He was a fucking horrible human being. Like he could not hold the jock strap 
and or panties of any of the fucking people that I just mentioned. Right. At all. Um, fuck, man. I, it, like, these guys are the best. I mean, Bob Dylan's credited with fucking everything, for Christ's sakes. Uh, the, you've got the Beatles. You know what was interesting that they did not mention in this? Ringo. <laughs> because he's not going to die, and we all know it. And that's the world that we're going to live with. And I think he's the oldest. I think he's like 79. So. No. I think he is. I think he's the fucking oldest. And okay. they didn't even put that's him in this hilarious. article. Hilarious. Which is really, really funny. Uh, look up Ringo. Just type in Ringo Star age and see what he is. 79. You I are told you. right. 79. Holy Boom. crap. They didn't even. Because they, they again, they know he's him not. In this article. He's not in the dead list, though. Like, he will live. That's the bitch of it. Is Paul <laughs> McCartney, younger than Ringo, is going to die before him. Yeah. And Ringo's going to be, if you ever want to see a Beatle again. You're going to have to go see Ringo in concert doing the one song that he has any rights to do, Submarine, which is the worst one. <laughs> and that's going to be your life. So that that's why they didn't put him on here. They didn't even list Ringo I in this article, man. I love it. I mean, so much. That's so fucking funny, man. I, look, out of the guys who've gone real hard here, uh, <sighs> I mean, you've got to put, look, obviously Keith is one, right? What, yeah. Nobody I think in the history of the Earth has raged yeah. as hard as Keith has. Um, Mick Jagger stopped, what, 20 years ago? And, I mean, has been on this yes. crazy health kick. And, like, yeah. that is the most healthy human being I've ever seen in yeah. real life to this day where you're just like, dude runs... 10 miles i'd be curious to see what his he's the one that went in for heart surgery and keith is sitting there like (laughs) i'll see when you get out mate yeah you know what i mean just smoking a marble red not a surgery no not a murmur nope not an afib nothing 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 out of that guy and uh i guess i would say uh, looking down this list like i i saw the the clapton documentary like he's just essentially a grandfather running around with kids i mean he's actually got Small sure. kids too. Yeah, which is wild. So does so does Mick. So does Mick. Um, but I mean, I would probably throw Neil Young on that list. As far as what? Who went hard in their life, and then obviously Elton John. You know, yeah. Like who went the hardest in this list? So you, you probably look out for those guys first. Robert Plant stayed in pretty good shape. Is Elton John on the list? Yeah, seventy-two. I predict he's been on my death list really well, he was last year yeah because when we when we, we even saw, him, saw yeah, yeah. him there was a nosebleed there was uh it was not good and uh i'm sure he's fine but man he I, was on my death list. i saw bob dylan in 1996 right a long time ago and it was a small small child i think it was maybe one two years old um because i'm super young and uh Probably two or three years old, right? Or whatever. Mm-hmm. To be real, is when I saw him then, mm-hmm. he did not look great then. No, and he's never looked good. Uh, and he's never. You look great. Uh, look, been you look at those old. Live. <laughs> yeah. You look at those old photos from the sixties and seventies. Like he was a pimpy dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like hippie, hippie, hipster pimp. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not my super type, but uh, he has never been great live so that he has going for him Oof. i don't know uh paul simon usually i think he's just got booked for snl i think he's gonna do snl again i know he's best friends with lauren michaels mm-hmm. and paul simon's always been one of those ones who was his voice has always been pretty good he's always kind of looked the same age and you're yeah. like yeah all right um but yeah that i going through this list man that's brutal because i, I don't out of our, like our generation, our gap who's left over, like, I mean, I'd be pissed if Eddie Vedder died. Mm-hmm. Dave Matthews, probably. Um, the rest of them went down early, man. Like fucking Cobain, mm-hmm. Tupac, Biggie, like those guys. Like, um, as I look, we know, we know, the, we know one thing for sure with, with Tupac. He definitely would have endured. Because the motherfucker recorded seven albums and they were all rad after they came out for the next 10 years. So 
he definitely would have endured. Like, you know, some of these guys you don't really know. With like Biggie, he had one more album out and they put it out posthumously. Posthumously they put it out. Right. And it was great. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was fantastic. But uh, fuck, I think he died the night of the listening party of it. Um, but, uh, you know, the rest of these guys who are on the come up right now, like, man, if fucking... I guess Madonna I'd be sad about because, like, you know, she was kind of the revolutionary one who was really pushing the envelope. But think about it. Michael Jackson died, right? He was the king of pop. Mm-hmm. Uh, Prince is gone. Yep. So who's the who's in this mix now that's alive, that's crushing it, that you'd be really devastated over? Eh. Yeah. I'm kind of like, eh. You know what I mean? Post Malone for me. That's about it. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Posty, breaking news. What? New album comes mm. out Thursday at midnight. Um, I am all in on that. I cannot wait for that album. Man, I fucking love that guy. It's always so fucking eclectic and different, and I have no idea what it's going to be. He played a snippet on his Instagram that was maybe 20, 30 seconds long of a song that was just like, what the fuck is this? It sounded like it was from some like weird indie movie, and it was like hard rock. And uh, yeah, man, I, I I'm gonna pull up that track list because there was a bunch of weird people on there too. Um, but the three songs were announced already, and I, I kind of wanted to touch on that. Uh, that artists are doing this more and more. So that Wow song is on there. That's mm-hmm. already been number one. The Sunflower song, which came out I think last oh, year yeah. for that thing uh, with the thing on it. Yeah, for the Spider Man movie. Uh, and then a new one just dropped the other day, Circles. It's pretty good. It's super poppy. Okay. L- listen to it. It is real pop where you're like, oh, this could be like the Shins maybe or somebody where you're like, what the fuck? Um, yeah. Super eclectic. But the reason why musicians are doing this more and more, uh, Taylor Swift has done it where she's releasing songs up until the the thing is, I didn't know that it counted towards your opening week sales. Oh, so those songs. Correct. When you release them. Mm-hmm. Okay. And how many they've sold. Actually, could, because they're a part of your album, they count for sales. Hmm. Therefore, it'll drive you to number one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I learned that on the Taylor Swift thing where I was just like, ah. Because I'm like, why are people putting songs that came out like three months ago, four months ago on there? Yeah. And I was just like, ah, because it, it counts. And then it'll drive your album to the top of the charts. And then, therefore, everybody can listen to your album. And if it's rad, then it'll go higher and higher and higher. Right. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up who's on there because there was a couple weird ones on there that I was like, huh? That he collabed with? Yeah. Okay. Uh, here we go. So we're going to pull up. It's called Hollywood's Bleeding. And uh, look, the only reason I'm hyping this so much is the last two albums to me were fantastic. Lights out. Um, and I'm going to talk about another one I just listened to that was really, really good. Um, but uh, Travis Scott, Meek Mill, um, which is odd. Caesar, remember that chick we watched at the Grammys, which is S Z A. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, Ozzy Osbourne. Okay. Um, Young Thug. I've already heard that song. Uh, but yeah, I was. Uh, I was really, really surprised by that. I was just like, okay, Ozzy Osbourne is going to be there. But that makes sense because he did the like Aerosmith, not collab, but he would play with, you know. Yeah. He likes to be a part of that rock. World. Oh, yeah. I, I just think yeah, he's a yeah. fan. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Baby is on there, which, look, that fucking dude is on fire. Um the most simplest rap music on the planet, but he is on fire. Kind of reminds me of 21 Savage before he really popped. Uh, Future's going to be on there, which, you know, hip-hop community loves Future. I think he sounds like everybody else. Yeah. Uh, and then Halsey, who, nice. big fan. Yes. Uh, big fan of Halsey. So, it should be a wild album, man. Um, and there's 17 tracks on it. Uh, people are, I, I like that people are going after the 17 track thing now. Um, uh, Taylor Swift did 18 on hers. Um, if you'll remember a few shows ago, I listened to that. It's a fantastic album. I just, yeah. So I listened to it after that. It was really good. Really good, right? It's number one. Uh, so today the Billboard charts came out. Obviously it's number one. 
the surprising thing about it is she's still the only artist that is selling physical copies of CDs. That's insane. So she almost broke a million. And the reason why that's a big deal is, dude, even 10 years ago, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring this back to 08. Uh, there, was a, there was a documentary about Lil, uh, Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne, and it was right around the lollipop time. Um, I think it was like the Carter three or four or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it was Carter four, I think. Um, regardless, during that, this documentary, all they kept saying was, man, it would be great for an artist to sell a million in a week to show that it's still possible, mm-hmm. right? Because streaming was starting to happen. Napster and LimeWire and all that bullshit were there. And you were like, man, will people still go out and buy it if they're that big of fans? Taylor Swift, man, they are. And they went out and bought physical copies of the CD where I was just like, how are you still doing this? Who is buying And where do you put the CD in? Where do you put it in at? I mean, I guess, does your car have it? Um... I you have might a new have car. a C- I might have I do a too. CD. Yeah. I bet I got yeah. that I've got a new forerunner. Um, and it's not even like a disc changer, obviously. It's no, just you just a put little... it in. Yes, I think I do. So I, I mean I would I, like a tape deck, but yeah, that's just me. It, it's just man, it, really, really crazy. So I'm gonna read off her actual physical numbers. Um my God, man, eight hundred and sixty seven thousand. Like that that was that's of really goddamn close. Yes, CDs, physical CDs. Is that worldwide? Obviously. Uh, let's Has U.S. To U.S. sales totals. U.S. only. Yeah. Holy. Oh wait, it's saying okay. So these I, I'm, I'm uh, I want to correct myself here. Um, six hundred seventy nine thousand were actual f- the physical okay cds okay the other ones were the album where you buy the album on itunes okay okay yeah yeah yeah. but here's the thing if you have apple music you don't have to buy the album mm-hmm. anymore you can just listen to it over and over again pay 14.99 a month and that's it you're done with it and your whole family can like you know family of five can listen to it the fact that people are saying no i love her i'm gonna buy this and put it support on my thing her. and support her um is really really crazy now on the flip side of post malone his last album was number one in the world um but only sold forty thousand physical copies of cds but was over a million with digital and all that other shit where you're just like jesus man and then stream wise i think you know he was number one in the world for close to six months so obviously a different generation i think um but uh, that is incredible for Taylor Swift. Um, and then the new one that just dropped was uh, Lana Del Rey. And I said, look, I'll give that a listen Z's over the weekend. It's fucking great, man. I'm sure. It's really, really great. She's great. It is her own unique style. And it's, you know, when you listen to Lana Del Rey, it reminds me of, you know, listening to like a, like a, like Red Hot Chili Peppers where it's just like, oh, man. At Southern California, I know exactly who those dirt bags are. Yeah, They're yeah, Venice yeah. or whatever. Her sound is like this breezy, like summer, summer Santa Barbara, fucking, just very big little eyes. Oh sure, you know sure, where you're just like, yeah, all right, yeah, great, and she crushed it, crushed it. Um, so with with hopefully Post Malone this week, <coughs> and then those two. That'll be three back-to-back albums. <coughs> and then the new one, uh, the new one that everybody's talking about, Kim Kardashian leaked it, which mm. she doesn't leak anything, so we no. should probably just tell the audience. she's Everything is strategically planned down to the second yes. of what she does, but she left a notepad out um, on her desk and took a picture, and it said September 27th, and then it had a track list of, 12 songs for Kanye's new album. Okay. So expect that. It appears to be super religious. Um, Obviously, he's touring the country right now. Yeah. That's his that's his thing right now. Right. Real or not. I'm not sure. But that's his thing. I believe it's probably real because that is a lot of effort and time. And freeness, like he's just doing free shit all mm-hmm. over the country. Um, I, I would, 
I, I can't imagine you wouldn't, not, you know, do it for free if you didn't believe in it, I guess. You know, because the mm -hmm. places he's gone have been really, because he's been doing these Sunday services, which we've talked about on the show. Uh, Coachella, he did a live one there, and mm -hmm. they built that whole thing, and fucking 50,000 people came at like 6 a.m., which is crazy, um, but it was great, and we watched it. And he's now been taking this on the road to cities where Shit is going wrong. Uh, either mass shootings or, you know, floods or whatever it is. So he was just in Dayton, mm -hmm. uh, you know, after the Dayton shooting. Yeah. And he did one there. Again, free. Anybody who could show up could just show up. There's not really any security there. Uh, so it's just, I mean, it's clearly just him. Um, and then uh, he is going to El Paso next. So he's going to do it in El Paso. And then he was just in Watts over the weekend um, in, uh, in L.A., obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, Brad Pitt was there. Stop. Yes. Brad, so Brad Pitt came, and my uh, friend of ours, uh, Xander, was there, mm -hmm. actually, and had, had footage of it. And I talked to him, and I was like, yo, man, was Brad Pitt there? Um, and he sent me a screenshot of, he was like, dude, he was like 10 feet away from me. He sent me a screenshot of Brad Pitt, and I was like, What? Brad Pitt showed up at a, at a Kanye event, a and Sunday Watts. service in, in Watts. Brad Pitt rolled down to Watts. Yeah, the more surprising part of the story is that Brad Pitt was in Watts. The more, the more surprising part is Brad Pitt is that fucking dude. So I'm looking at the footage now. There is maybe four to five white people there in Watts, and mm -hmm. one of them is Brad Pitt. Mm -hmm. No security. Mm -hmm. T-shirt, kind of like a little dirty, you know, one of those little sure. newsboy caps. Mm hmm. Chilling, dude, in, in the middle of this crowd for a huge Sunday service in Watts. Oh, I love him so much. When you're famous enough just to supersede everything, like, it's great. And the fact that he mm -hmm. came, that's the second one, he said. So my buddy was there. He was like, that was the second one he's been to. Oh. Um, and then, so Dave Chappelle went, did the, the one in Dayton. And what did he do? What do you mean? He went there? Or I don't he... know. There, uh, I would say this. Like, they, they try to be respectful and not put out that much footage from these things. Oh, yeah. Because it is set up as this kind of spiritual, religious yeah, yeah, yeah. thing. And most, you know, you'll get like a 30-second snippet from people, but not a lot. Yeah. Um, there's not a lot of footage of this stuff. So um, he encourages people to put their phones down and just enjoy the experience. Yeah. But they go for like two hours plus, all these things. And he's been doing it for, I think, since like January. I, I, to, to do all that for free, what's the, what's your gain off that if you weren't, you know? Yeah. So it's kind of a. I never know what he's really up to, but yeah. <laughs> I don't either. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's the thing about it. Yeah. It's like, does he or does he like the aesthetic? Does he like the, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but I'll it, give him the benefit. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read off of her leaked notebook that she posted. Okay. She posted it, and it was in perfect condition. Um, almost looks fake. That's how good it looks. Sure, sure. Uh, it looks like the album is going to be called Jesus is King. And uh, I mean, there's a song called God Is, Wake the Dead, Water, Sweet Jesus, Sunday. So I, look, the whole thing could be a religious experience like what he's been doing. I don't know. Okay. But if anybody's going to do something new and innovative, it's probably going to be him. I guess so. Yeah. I mean, did you see the, the clips that Xander posted yesterday were like, it's incredible. I, I, I mean, it, who knows? Who knows what, what it's going to be? Yeah. Who knows? But I'm amped for it. Totally. Because uh, nobody's really doing shit like that. So we'll see. See it, Javes. There's at least some small sliver of hope of like, all right, there's a few good albums coming out. Yeah. Uh, we're two for two so far with the last two I've heard. New ones that are that are pretty big. Yep. Um, a lot of people, the Tool put out a new album for the first time in like 13 or 14 years. Okay. And we have a lot of listeners who are Tool fans, and they, I, I was like, how is that? Because I'm not a big, yeah, 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 I'm not a big Tool fan, and uh, they said it was shitty. No. Yeah. And they were like, eh, we were disappointed. So. I want a new Jack White something. Ah, I want so do Jack I. Be great. White to be working on. Like when you told me that list, and I, I'm now thinking like, 
who yes i would be disappointed if who Jack now you're right. you're right no but like who now so those people go right uh-huh they die which they will sorry that's just what happens in life everyone yes no one lives forever no one beats the end of life uh, kind of crappiness if you do stay alive past 80 yep nobody nobody beats that no jack white mhm um i would like an arcade fire sitch i'm just thinking like so i remember i didn't like their like last album when you're album. thinking about no, but they're trying different things and you have to be like, you know? Yes. They're always doing something different. They're always trying like to push some kind of genre type. Yeah. Same with Jack White. You're, you're right. Ja- and Jack White is just like, he's always good. Even if he's not good, he's like pizza, right? Yeah. Um, But I remember, and it's a really, really long time ago when their first album came out, Funeral. And I was in like L.A., very young because i'm super young a millennial cusper yeah and everyone knows that yeah and they tell me that all the time just how young whenever they see you i seem and look and everything like this Mm -hmm. um but i remember when i heard that album for the first time i was like it was a it gave that gave me hope oh yeah yeah of the people that are going to take over for everyone on that next generation yeah um and will be looked back on as like changing music because they were before the Mumford and Son but they still had the like OAO all the mm-hmm. weird you know the very orchestral like just it I don't know very triumphant like yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what I mean yeah. uh different stuff super talented amazing yep so them and Jack White and then I'm sure you know there's other people too that can like take over not very many I do like a Mumford and Son. I think they're great. Mm. Um, I don't think they're like gonna revolutionize anything, right? But I think they're fun. I've liked I've liked all their albums. Uh, I've liked all their albums too, but I don't think when I heard it, I was like, "Oh my god, right they are pushing revolutionary yeah. boundaries." Yeah. They're just kind of bringing up older. Yeah. They're making older music more accessible to a younger crowd. Is all like yes. people were making that kind of music a very long time ago, right? Yeah. In the exact same way. I like uh, Kings of Leon, but Kings they're, of not, Leon, they're but not doing anything inventive, really. No, and I don't anymore. think they ever really did. They were very good. Yeah. A very good rock band, but they were never like pushing any boundaries and making things like if you look at Pink Floyd or things like this. Like, I think you could throw Kanye probably in there only because he does that kind of stuff where he will do like a Sergeant Pepper next to a. You know what I mean? Abbey Road, where it's yeah. like so insanely different. It's just like what you're into at the time, and you're going to just like make it a thing for that exact moment. Right? Yeah, I was I was at the gym the other day, and I'm looking I was looking for uh, like you, you, I'm sure everybody else feels like this, too, where you're, you feel like you're out of music and you're like, yeah. man, I got nothing to fucking work out yeah. to. So with Apple Music, I was just like, man, who is somebody that's got a ton of hits that I can just work out to and get through an hour of this shit? Um, so it was Kanye, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I flipped it, you know, put his name on there. And then just, if you go through songs, it just lists like a million of them. Mm-hmm. Dude, you're just gassing through hit after hit after hit. And you're like, oh shit, I forgot about that. Forgot yeah. about that. Forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll see how the, the next one does. Uh, last but not least here, Jabes, really, really want to get into um, this picture. And it's fucking real, man. Uh, the American Airlines... A passenger brought on a miniature horse as their support animal. No. Nope. Yes. And this was flying How from. How big? It's a fucking Shetland pony. Oh, Lord, quit. This yes. This cannot be real. Jamie, mark this point for the video show, and we can pull this picture up to post uh, it in here. Um, therapy horse. A therapy horse on a plane. It's fucking. I mean, it. It's a big guy. It looks like a Shetland pony. And it's Where's it gonna It's sitting the row behind first. First class. And the flight was from Chicago to Omaha. And I don't know how you get that thing through the airport. There's like I couldn't believe it. I couldn't fucking believe it. Oh. Yeah. Oh. No. Is that crazy? No. So obviously people are well, how how did how did it get 
that taking pictures far. Of it. How did it get that far? I, I don't know. How do you even get we it? We didn't let a peacock. We don't let a lizard. How do you? So looking at the, the size of this horse, right? Is you can't put it in a car. You would have to tow your trailer, your horse trailer to the airport. And I, look, this is at Chicago, man. This is at O'Hare. So like, and then what? Your buddy's going to drive you and drop you off? Because you don't park your car, do you? In like long term or short term? With your trailer on it, there's not enough space in those parking lots. Bro, I don't know. And then you bring the horse on. How do you even get this into... Because let's say you're just checking in, right? Yeah. Then you've got to walk it through security, the security line? That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, how does it get this far? But you know, the, when you guys watch the videos, it's hilarious because it is somebody just doing the dun, dun, dun close up. On just a horse's head hanging out of a seat. Really I mean, it funny. Is really funny. Nuts, dude. But, um, you like, know. It, it's almost hard to believe it's real. If somebody didn't snap that, I'd be like, no. Like, if somebody told me that story, I would be like, you're fuck off. That, that can't be true. I'm sorry, bro. Yeah. I mean. I just, here's my thing. So. But there's Pete, there's somebody sitting next to this person, and then the horse is in front of them. I'd be like, hey, man, get your fucking horse out of the way. I pack my bag or I, um, I check my bag, no matter how big or small, because of the anxiety that I feel from having to find a place for it on the plane. Mm -hmm. um, I like to personally travel with just myself. Like, right? Yeah. Like, you know, if, if I have kids... I, I have to bring them fine. But the best part, the only good part about flying is just like, just check your bag, right. bring your purse, sit down, have your foot, like just not worry. It's, it's nerve wracking enough for me. And yeah. I don't need a therapy, anything therapy. Yes. But I don't need a therapy like thing, animal, whatever. And yeah. I, uh, and I am still like, it gives me anxiety to have to like carry more than one bag. So the fact that someone is willing to bring the horse on, have to deal with it, yeah, not be able to relax the entire flight, having everyone look at them and be like, to me, that would give me more anxiety than it would a, a calming therapeutic Oh, yeah. Horse, yeah. Right? Yes. It seems like the complete opposite of what the achieve, what the, the intended effect is. Crazy. Right? Like thinking about their whole travel experience with the therapy horse makes me crazy. Yeah. Makes I, me so nervous. I, I can't and believe it. And even the going up to the security, because you know how like I don't like to do anything wrong anyways. So the anxiety of that of like bringing the horse and being like, are they going to be cool with this? That whole thing is like a nightmare. Nightmare. I'm like weighing my bag. Just like, please just let it off. Please don't charge mm -hmm. me extra for my mm. hair dryer. Did I take all the liquids out? Like that's my experience. Banana dick. This is crazy. And a horse with me would absolutely compound that a million times. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not even that, but what if it dumps out in the airport? What do you do then? How do you clean that up? When you get napkins from Cinnabon? Just clean that up with uh, you know, fistful of napkins from Cinnabon? Oh, sorry, my horse took a shit in the airport. I gotta clean this up with a And uh, they do napkins from Cinnabon. They do. If there's anything that just shits a little bit all day long, it's, it's a, a horse. horse. It's a fucking horse. It's a horse. So I don't know, man. Uh do you have a crime corner? Oh, I do. Blam. Oh, do you really? Oh, blam. Crime corner. Crime corner. Crime corner. <laughs> um, now I'm wondering if this, uh, these two gals were, if you knew about this or if you put them up to this. Mm. So, uh, a mother and daughter arrested for stealing $200 worth of crab legs. Ah. Was that for you? Maybe. You and couldn't I'll, find it. Let me find out who. Yeah, who's your detective? Who's my detective on that? I'll tell you why it might be for me. There is a, 
Oh man, this could be an epic, awesome troll, um, possibly. Okay. So we have this uh, draft in fantasy football. Um, there is a guy named Jameis Winston who is the quarterback. This is Tristan Funnel, Detective Tristan Funnel. Mm, I don't know. Um, the T Fun on uh, Instagram. Here's here's why. Uh, we have fantasy football draft for Drinking Bros. The quarterback from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is Jameis Winston. Jameis uh, Winston was infamous for walking into a grocery store, stealing crab legs, and yeah. then just walking out. So I guess it's a thing then. So this is no, it is not. It is definitely not a thing. I want to stress that for the audience. We have two stories in front of us. You know what I mean? That one, this one. Yeah. Well, two doesn't make a a thing. A little sixty nine. Yes, it does. Um, Memphis, Tennessee, a mother and daughter have been arrested for allegedly stealing hundreds of dollars worth of crab legs from a grocery store in in uh, Memphis. My favorite part is this. Now they're stuffing it all in their purse. Mm. Okay, so it's, it's just smell. the yep. and the legs are sticking out. Don't yeah. you feel? Yeah. I mean, you have to have a pretty big purse for the the whole leg. You need a backpack to get in there. Yeah, a backpack. But they had purse purses. Yeah. Um, and when the store manager tried to stop them, police said that they hit her in the face. Ah, punched her in the face. Yeah. Mother and daughter. Yep. Out out in the grocery store getting some crab legs. You bet. No, we're not going to pay for this. And if anyone tries to stop us, man or woman, we're punching them in the face. Punching right in the face. Ready and go. Boom. Right? Blammo. Blammo. Yeah. Mission. Accomplished. <laughs> Accepted. Not <laughs> accomplished. <laughs> they didn't get away with it. Huh? They didn't get away with All it. Right. Uh, Felicia. Obvious. Yeah. Obvious joke take there. A, take a flyer there. Um, and Gabrielle. Um were charged with theft of property and assault. Yeah. They could have just gone with the property, but they had to punch that poor woman manager in the face. Sure. <laughs> and they were arrested short time after. They admitted to stealing the crab legs without paying for them. Now, listen. Okay. Here's what they didn't know. I think, well, another manager told the news station that crab legs and oxtails are often... The target of thref theft. Really? Crab legs and oxtails. I think they're very expensive. They are. Crab legs are very decadent. expensive. Yes, it is. So if you want a little bit of luxury in your life mm -hmm. and you don't have money for it, you know, I think that's where it happens, right? Yeah. That's where I think most theft probably occurs. occurs. You want something in your life that you do not have money for. Yeah. Right? Yeah, no, for sure. Fair. And it could be crab legs, oxtail. You bet. Here's my jewelry. problem. Here's my problem with the crab legs is it's they stink. They stink. So uh, no matter where your house is, unless you're going to eat them, you know, out back by the dumpster. But let's face it again. Decadent, like you said. Sure. Very decadent. Very luxurious. decadent. That is you want to enjoy that in the comfort of your own home. You do not want to go and eat that in a car or next to the dumpster out back. Mm -hmm. You want to probably go home and, and eat that in the comfort of your own home, right? Because you might want to might want to heat them up. We don't know. That's probably what might they were going them. to do. Yeah, but we don't know. Maybe but that was the goal. I think probably. But the, it ruin it, it would ruin the inside of your purse. It would stink. Mm -hmm. um, yep. To high heavens. So. Yep. And they probably oh. thought small small price to pay, but um. Oh, the purse! Like losing the purse over it. Yep. Maybe. Small purse I don't know how much pay. a purse is these days. I thought they were expensive. I, could, I, I think could both be wrong. their purses combined could be 200 bucks that they just... All right. And they were willing to risk it all for the crab risk legs. Risk it all for the crab legs. Look, Jameis Winston just walked in, grabbed a handful of them, and then just fucking bounced. So. Now, when you're still in the store, though, which they didn't, these two gals didn't know, if they hadn't have just punched the manager in the face, they could have been like, no, we were just taking them to the front, and we didn't have anywhere else to put them got it you could yes now if they want to push that issue you have not left the store do you yep. know what i'm saying no you're still sure. inside the store so you can technically say no we were gonna buy them we just yeah we, just we didn't. didn't have enough you know hands we didn't grab a basket i don't know our bad right yeah but gosh they just had to they had to punch that woman had in the to face. punch that woman in the face full of crabs it's a hard one to go home to too like honey what happened at work today i got punched in the face why there I were two people trying to steal crab, crab legs, legs 
And they were they hanging out of their in purse. The face. Yes. And they, I told them, hey, don't do that. And they punched me right in the face. Yeah. That so. is a tough one to come back from of why you want to do that job. Sure. Um, so, man. there well, you go. Crime Corner. It's a great one. <laughs> it's a great one, Jabes. I'm going to end on a great revolutionary figure of the day, too, for you. Please. This is going to be your day all the way around, Jabes. Oh, wow, 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 wow. wow. Uh, Canal. Canal Reeves. Oh, Canal Reeves. Today's Thank his birthday. He turned 55 years old. Oh, my God. You believe that? I don't. I'm almost mad at that. I and don't And I'll tell you why. It. it doesn't look 55. He doesn't. Looks like he's fucking 36 still. He's permanently looked 36 for maybe 30 years at this That's point. That's the trick, is to never look young. Although he did. Yeah, he yeah. did. Remember, he did, and Bill and Ted, I guess. But like, no, after not that, even Bill and Ted. Before Bill and Ted, the like California, what was it? He Matrix was, C, like, dude, he was always like thirty six. I felt like, well, I guess he was actually thirty six when he had the Matrix. Yeah, exactly. That's weird. Uh, but he looks great. Yeah. Um, probably, I would argue to say he's more famous than ever right now at fifty five. I think so. People love him, man. I think so. He's become an internet hero for people, and um, when I you're, think from just being like. Just a great guy. He is in a in a Keanu sans right now. There's a Keanu uh, sans. Keanu sans. Keanu like sans is going on right now. People are finding him. My own private Idaho is where he was like young. And River's Edge. River's Edge is probably my favorite Keanu vehicle of all time. Yeah. Check it out. It's amazing. But he was young in that, and then he was always 36 after that. Yeah. Right? He was young in River's Edge. He was a kid, actually, in River's Edge. Played a high schooler. But, yeah. Hmm. And, like, really was in high school. But, uh, yeah, gosh. Good for him. Good I've, for You him. know, and I've always, haven't I? I've always talked about Canal. He's right there. With reverence, yes. He's right there. This is from He's River's right Edge, wall. by the way. Subscribe so he's young. On he's young there. YouTube. Ah, but but I've still, always still said kind of he, I've always said he is consistently just enough right yeah which is a you know for this many years it's something to be celebrated now Fuck. it's something to be lauded now it's that great. you have always you've never been great and you've never been horrible in my mind you've always just been the exact thing same yeah yeah for the exact role a lot of not too great not too there's a lot to that there's there a lot is to a that. lot to that i know i know uh, lastly, want to give a well wishes, uh, send out some well wishes to Kevin Hart. Um, he was in a brutal car crash. I don't know how, looking at this footage, no idea how he survived this. Um, the details right now are very, very sparse, which I find odd. Uh, here's what we do now. Yeah. He was not driving. Uh, it, it was his car, this old Barracuda that he bought for himself for his 40th birthday. Uh, he was on Mulholland, so like, I will say this. That road sucks and is dicey at night. It was about 1 a.m. There was a man and a woman in the car. Um, they were choppered out of there to for life or whatever, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the girl was fine. Um, Kevin Hart just had back surgery. He had a serious, serious injury with his back. And he, he just came out of surgery, it says. Uh, and he'll, they said he'll be in the hospital for a few days. But he is awake and recovering now. Um the, the driver was not drinking, so TMZ says, Okay. right now. Um, his name is Jared Black. Hang on. They got a, they got a little update here. Okay. Um, Jared's. Oh, okay. He's a celebrity trainer uh -huh. um, uh, that he's, that the, the woman is. Um, and it appears to be Jared's fiance. Okay. So it was the two of them. Just making sure. Obviously, Kevin Hart has had some. So, what was the first thing? Cheating I asked? scandals. Yes. Was there a woman the in the car? The first thing yep. you said, you said he got an accident. I go, what woman was in the car? Yes. And you were like, yeah. There uh, was we didn't one. know. We they didn't just, know. They just said but it. You now. did know there was another man and another woman, and he famously um, 
has a wandering eye and so, gets caught in weird ways like that. So I, I was saying like, that's the nightmare. He was with his trainer and uh, or a celebrity trainer and then their fiance. So mm-hmm. it was the two of them. She got pulled out and she's fine. Okay. I don't know how, man, if you look at this, the aftermath of this car, yeah, it looks like a fucking tornado hit it. And I, I can't believe anybody's alive from this. I cannot believe it. It is a miracle if you look at the footage of this. Mm. Um, absolutely crazy. But I look, I do know that road. I hate that road. I've never liked that road. And trying to get home or out of there at night sucks, man. There is nothing. To me, there's nothing set up. There's gaps in that road, too, that have no railing where you're just like, yeah. oh, if I'm driving right now, I could have easily driven right off the cliff. I mean, like a movie. Yeah. Yeah. That's what that road is like. And for whatever reason, they put like some of it, some of the railing up there is just wooden gates where you're like, man, my car would drive right through this. So what, what are these even for? Um, it's a tough one up there, man. Uh, something They should do something with Mulholland, I think. They should. But, but they never do. They never do. And it's not a road that you ever need to go on. So No. So just steer clear. You can steer clear of it. <laughs> well, do you know what I mean? You don't have to go on Mulholland unless you live there. A lot of celebrities live up there. So. Yeah, and if you live there. Yeah, be careful. Good for you. I think you probably know those streets. But I need to go watch uh, Walk in the Clouds. Which is another one of my favorite. Celebrate Keanu today. The Magic Mailbox, which was uh, his most problematic film. Mm. The Lake House. <laughs> With Sandra Bullock, and they send the letters, and there was a there was Is so it? many oh, holes. It's actually, I think, no, 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 no. I think no. they did a How Did This Get Made, which is a really good podcast. What? I like that movie. I yeah, and I liked it, it too. Look, I enjoyed, I enjoyed it too. But if you really do, yes, yes, and that's why uh, How Did This Get Made? Like I said, this podcast. Yeah. Um, on Earwolf, actually. Yeah. But uh, they did it, and it, it's so, there are so many little tidbits that you can use on those where you're roasting a movie. Mm. But it's great. It's yeah, great. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, it just, uh, very, uh, lots of holes and lots of confusing parts that you they bet. did not really you <laughs> bet. Uh, think about. They didn't, uh, but they both look great, and I believe right. in them. Yeah, um, I you know obviously love them in Speed. So and I like them together. You know, they dated Same. for a little bit. It's kind of like yeah. Hanks and Meg Ryan. Yeah. I'm surprised. I, I would have loved to have seen them end up together. I know. In real life, I know. But alas, we didn't have that. Ah. Uh, it's, uh, like, uh, it's like Gosling and McAdams. They should have just you know made it. Stay? Work. Do you think is he not? W- I don't think he's with that gal anymore. Who? Gosling with the mom of his kids, is he? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we got two kids now, I think. Okay. Um, it's it's homegirl. Uh, she's an actress. Yeah. Homegirl. From, from Training Day. Mm-hmm. You know exactly what I'm talking about. She's pretty famous. No, I know. I'm, I'm blanking on her name, but I just uh, don't feel like looking it up. Yeah. Nah. Why would you? Uh, for Jesse Wiseman, she's aka the Jables. She's a Latin gal. She is hot. I am Ross Patterson. This is the Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night.